Hi, this is Mike from the Substream, and this is an episode of Watch This Instead for the week ending the 29th of May, 2009. I want to talk today about a movie called The Brothers Bloom. It was directed by a guy named Ryan Johnson, and it stars Adrian Brody and Mark Ruffalo as the titular brothers, who just so happen to be the most famous, most skilled, most, art- most artistic con men in the world. It also stars Rachel Weisz as Penelope, the incredibly rich, incredibly shy, awkward, isolated lonely master of a million hobbies who is the mark in the brothers latest con. The film's introduced by Ricky Jay, the famous prestidigitator and thrower of cards, and he introduces the the film with a short poem about the brothers Bloom, about how they've been together since they were children, moving from foster home to foster home is causing hell and mayhem, but always together and always with each other. And it's kind of what messes the film up a little bit is that Johnson tried to make his movie, The Brothers Bloom, about, to me, so many different things, all of which, to be fair, are interesting, original, and creative approaches to stuff that I want to see a movie about, but there's just so much of it jammed into the same movie. The fact that, apparently, an early draft of the script was called Penelope, the other character in the triangle in the film, that later changed to Brothers Bloom is kind of an indication of how jammed full the story is with layers of meaning and intricacy. And when you add in a con story where you never really know where somebody's allegiances are and you never know who's taking whose money and for what reason and set up, it just becomes kind of confusing and not really in a plot way but in a thematic way. Plot-wise and subplot-wise and thematically and sub-thematically and Symbolism-wise, it kind of resolves itself by the end of the film. But it, the problem is, is that the last half of the second act, where all of these different things are being explored, kind of in a serious, kind of committed way by some good, talented actors and a pretty talented director, the relationship between two brothers, the relationship between a, a person and their mentor or father, between a person and someone that he's in love with, between somebody who is in love with somebody for wrong reasons, between somebody that's been inside her whole life and is experiencing adventure in the world. It's so thick with stuff that it just kind of ends up flat and kind of too much to handle and it bogs down because of that. And it ends up being kind of slow. And that's not to say that the film isn't filled with all kinds of ingenious shots and gags and neat little moments of performance and script writing because it is. It's just to say it tried to do too much. So what should you watch instead? Well, if you haven't seen Ryan Johnson's first film, you probably need to see it. It was called Brick, and it stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and they shot it for like $500,000, and it's like the most creative, neatest genre film that I've seen in probably the past five years. It's a hardcore noir film. We talked about it in one of our other videos it's on the substream somewhere and there'll be a link to it down there somewhere down below here but it's basically a high school crime story about girlfriends and detectives except done in absolutely pitch perfect noir lingo and style the problem the thing with that film what made that film work though is that it was a simple smaller idea and it tried to do two things it tried to talk about genre it, and it tried to tell a compelling crime story and it did both of those things really really well you could also see Ricky Jay, who introduces the Brothers Bloom, in some of the best actual con men movies of all time that he made with his friend David Mamet, those being House of Games from 1980, I'll put it in a thing here, or The Spanish Prisoner. You could see him in The Heist too with Gene Hackman, but that one's not as good. So watch any of those instead. That's all.